Welcome to this tutorial on the Flash workspace. So <clears throat> we're just going to go through and look at all the different features in Flash, what the different tools are, and some of the different workspaces that are available. So the first thing we'll do is we will take a look at the different workspaces. So under the Windows menu, we have at the very bottom, among all the other things here, the chance to organize your um, workspace into different categories. So the one I have open right now is called Animator. If I go to Classic, it just rearranges kind of the same palettes and uh, windows into different places. So the timeline is here, the workspace is here, the properties palette is here, and then some of the other palettes that you saw over on the left or organized over here into these, this bar. Uh, and your toolbar is here. So it just reorganizes things into a different spot. You'll notice that there's different tabs. So right now I can see the timeline. If I want to go to the motion editor when I create motion, I can go there. Uh, and it just kind of creates some more space. And you'll notice that the window in your workspace is a lot bigger. So we'll just take a look at a couple other ones. If I've got the debug one, that's for uh, when you get into the programming. The designer one, I'll just quickly show you that. It's a very big workspace uh, and the tools are up here in a palette and the properties and so on. Um, so whichever one that you want to use is up to you, of course. Um, the, the small screen one is nice because it, it gives you the biggest space here for your viewing of what you're doing and it really simplifies everything and then all your palettes are hidden over here and you can click on them to open it up. So whichever one you want to use is fine. I'm going to use the animator one. And uh, the other thing about it is that you can actually do some self-editing of the workspace if you want to. So for example, if, uh, right now I've got my properties and my library here. I can take the properties palette and drag it out and put it over here. I can put it back there and if I put it along these tabs here, you see how it turns blue? It'll actually be a tab along here so now I have the same basic space except if I want to go to my library to look at my symbols I create, I go there. If I want to look at my projects that I have, uh, I can go there and then the properties palette is there. Uh, if I want to see a bigger window here, what I can do is double click on timeline hide that temporarily and it'll give me a really big view of my workspace the, called the stage. Uh, so I can hide those. I can also drag and resize the area. You can see it goes to that double white arrow and I can make this bigger or smaller if I want to. So I can uh, increase the size. So you have some control over the workspace. So kind of the really important things, of course, are the stage, which is where you're going to do the drawing and animating and be able to view it. You have your different tools here, and it works in conjunction with the properties palette. So what I'm going to do actually before I continue is I'm going to reset the workspace to where it was. So I'm on animator, and go down here near the bottom, I can go to reset animator, and what it'll do is it'll put everything kind of back to where it was. And I'm just going to drag this over a little bit so I have a little bit bigger workspace to work in. The tools there, are these are all the drawing tools. And for each tool, there's different settings kind of near the end here. So for my brush tool, I have some different settings, paint normal, paint behind, paint inside. We'll look at those later on. Uh, I can change the brush shape and the brush size. Uh, this button here is object drawing. Again, we'll look at that. And then, of course, I've got my different colors. So each tool will also have a different properties palette where you can do some of the editing. So if I go to my pencil tool, I can change the pencil color, the size of the line, the style of the line. The properties pal palette is where you can adjust the tools for drawing. Up here the, uh, is your timeline, another very important place. You have the ability to work in layers. You can see I had a, a quick animation there to introduce. I have two different layers. One is actually a folder 
and inside I have a whole bunch of layers there with the different letters on and this is how I created my animation. So I can open and close those folders. You can tell it's a folder by the symbol and by the arrow. Uh, along the timeline you have different numbers. Those are keyframes and the keyframes basically are basically a, one picture at a time much like a movie. You have frames and in a movie it's usually about 29 or sorry 24 frames per second in flash the default I believe is 29 uh, in the Hobbit it was filmed at 48 frames per second so uh, you can change the frame rate uh, down here you can see uh, it's actually 24 in flash as well so you can change the frame rate there you can play rewind you've got some controls over the timeline there um, you have this thing called onion skin which allows you to look at more than one frame at a time on your stage and we'll look at all those later when we get into the animating and drawing. Creating a new layer, creating a folder and the trash can of course is deleting. So this red line is called your playhead and that just allows you, I'll turn this animation on, it allows you to drag and kind of slowly look at your animation that you've created and you can drag that back and forth. You can see that I changed the color of my top text and then you can see that I animated the bottom text. So right now I'm at 200 frames which is at 24 frames per second is probably a little less than 16, 17 seconds of animation so far. On the left here you've got different palettes so colors you can choose uh, you have different swatches that you can choose as well. So if you want to click on a red, you've got a variety of different reds you can choose from. You can go there. The color palette, of course, you can scroll through and look at different colors as well. The align, basically what th this align palette does is uh, controls where you place objects on your screen. The transform uh, allows you to rotate, skew, um, kind of take your, your object or your shape and uh, rotate it, skew it, reshape it um, so you can have a different view of it. The info palette basically uh, gives you width and height, uh, x and y coordinates, so where it is placed along here it can be quite handy. So you can see the x and y coordinate changes as I draw my tool there and then it tells you if I click on a color, I'll just go to my black arrow here I click on that and it tells you, uh, or I just put my mouse over top of it, there you go. It says the RGB color is 00102 and so that gives you some information about the color. So whatever color you choose, so if I go here, you can see it gives it a, a no it doesn't actually, so I click on that, interesting it's not working, maybe I've hidden that. There we go. And it gives me, oh, it's 102. So if I go down here, you can see that it's a different color, 153 in red. Uh, the scene, uh, you can uh, create more than one scene. So you can have scene one, scene two, scene three, and it's just a way of organizing your timeline. We'll get to that a little later on. Uh, you've got your motion presets down here um, where you can drag in some preset motions, of course. Very logical. Uh, you have your typical menus up here, so your file save, uh, import, export. Import basically is bringing in other objects from your uh, either the library, or sorry, your folders into the library or directly onto the stage, which is the drawing area. So you can import audio, you can import um, drawings uh, from, uh, say, Photoshop or Illustrator and have them in your library to use in your, your um, in your flash animation. The publish settings, uh, that's basically for when you end up producing the, the movie, you can change the settings there. Uh, and of course there's print and exit in the file. Edit, you have the cut, copy, paste uh, things as well. The, one of the big differences is you have the timeline cut, copy, paste. So it works a little differently as well. You can cut, copy, paste like you normally do or you can cut frames and you can copy frames and layers um, so it works a little differently than the regular one there. 
Uh, you've got your view uh, where you can look at different things. So right now I've got the grid turned on. Just gives me some uh, a way to place things evenly in the stage. So I can hide the grid, I can hide the rulers. Um, I'm going to show the grid for now. And then you've got this thing called snapping. So basically it allows you to snap to the grid, snap to guidelines you can drag out from the rulers. Um, so it's just a, it's a way of lining things up kind of in a perfect position. So if I click on snap to grid, whatever I draw, I can snap to these lines and it will line up perfectly with them. The guidelines you basically drag from the ruler and you can place them there. Uh, they're a light green, a little hard to see at times, especially when the grid is on, but they are there. So you can have your animation snap to those and place them exactly in that position. Uh, you've got your modify, so this is where you can create symbols and you can edit symbols and you can edit your timeline. Again, we'll look at all of this in more detail, or at least some of them, over the next bunch of tutorials. You have insert, so you can create a new symbol. Um, you have insert timeline, and this is where you can create layers and frames and keyframes. Um, and we'll get to those later on, but basically a frame, like this one right here, is, or is um, sorry, not that one there, that's a keyframe. A uh, frame is this one here, the square, and that just basically um, creates time and distance along your timeline. Um, but there's nothing drawn there. A keyframe is this, and it's basically a circle, and you can tell it's been drawn in if it's black. If I have a keyframe that is just a circle, then there's nothing drawn in there, but it allows me to draw in there. So they're really easy to create. You can also right click and create your, uh, your animations, insert frames, keyframes, uh, cut and copy frames, you have those uh, as well. Right? And so of course there's more there. You've got command, control. This is where you can play, rewind your movie. You can go one frame at a time. It's also where you can test it out to see what it looks like. So if I go control test movie, it'll create what's called a shockwave flash file, SWF. Open it up and you can play it. Could I please have Rachel Woodward, Grace Goslin, Everett Kellner, and Elko Skinner to the office, please? Well, there you go. You can tell I work at a school. So there it will play it and loop it until, you, of course, you close it. So it gives you an idea of what your flash will look like. Basically, the white box here is your stage, and everything will appear on that animation. Hey, uh, debug, that gets into some high-tech programming stuff. And then window, this is where you can find different things. So for example, if you're looking for your actions palette, um, it will open that up. And this is where you can get into action script controls, which is the, the programming language for Flash um, when you get into some advanced stuff there. So you can open up different windows that aren't normally there. That will allow you to do some more editing. Okay, so you've got your toolbar, you have your main uh, toolbar. So if I open that up, it's got your things like open, save, print. Uh, and all of those are accessed under Windows. Then of course you have, which is generally really good in Adobe, your help folder. So you can go to Flash Help and try and find some tutorials. And, um, the, the, and some are videos and some are just written uh, for the help. So that basically is your workspace. I would say probably the most important things are your tools, your stage, and your timeline. So we'll focus on that over the next little while. And then your properties palette where you can do some editing of your tools. That is the Flash workspace. There is more. And we will show you some of this in greater detail in the next tutorials.